So welcome, Liz. You're founder of Medici Global. Why did you just decide to start this company? Well, actually, there were three reasons. One was children and spending more time with them and less global travel. The second, though, was in the desire to help people. And in 1983, I launched the very first television campaign for a prescription drug. At that time, ibuprofen was only available by prescription and not over the counter. And it proved to us when patients were taking the, um, talking about ibuprofen with their doctors, that they actually could be part of the dialogue about their healthcare. And it was some years later that I realized that many people were unaware of clinical trials. And it actually started with a drug called Taxotere in breast cancer. And women were not aware that clinical trials for this drug were in, in progress. And now, as we've expanded over 20 years in many different therapeutic areas, uh, it's a very, very important uh, part of the healthcare process, especially for people who cannot afford their healthcare. Because in a clinical trial, you get to have medical testing, access to some of the top doctors in the world, uh, access to new medicines. And so it really became a very important part of empowering patients about their treatment options and part of the dialogue. Well, in fact, what you did was invite patients into the dialogue, and that empowerment was a revolutionary paradigm shift in medicine at that time when doctors were barely, they were barely addressed, they were just genuflected to, and you really changed that game. So what are the services that your company is providing now that, are, uh, that relate back to that legacy? That's a very interesting question. The services that we provide is very much around working with patient advocacy groups, providing education and information about very specific clinical opportunities. It's about demystifying the clinical trial process. So for the average person, it's very t difficult to find out about what new medicines are in development and if there's an opportunity. So the first uh, step is really to provide easy to understand information about a specific clinical trial to guide them through the process, match them to a clinical research center and enable that match to produce dialogue and conversation to, to really determine whether or not that is the right opportunity for a particular individual. And there's lots of opportunities. Most people don't know where to look and we make that process very easy. But in, in the other side of it, um, new medicines take years and millions and millions of dollars of investment. So by matching patients to clinical trials, we can actually speed up the process. We can bring medicines to the market more efficiently, quickly, uh, and in fact lower cost because with delays comes higher cost of, of pharmaceutical development and potentially lost lives or, or further impaired lives. So the speed really matters quite a lot. I noticed there was an article in the Wall Street Journal which referenced one of the new exciting things you're working on, an Alzheimer's drug. Tell us about that. Yes, the Wall Street Journal um, outlined a very interesting project that we're working on currently, uh, hopefully for the very first drug to halt the progression of Alzheimer's. For the last 20 years, the focus has been on the plaques in the brain. Uh, and in fact, after 18 failed clinical trials, it's been proven that the plaques in the brain really are not the cause of Alzheimer's. But in fact, a hundred years ago, Dr. Alzheimer's himself di uh, discovered tangles in the brain of a 51-year-old woman. When in fact, uh, they looked at uh, these tangles in 1968 at Cambridge University, they found in fact that these tangles were linked directly to Alzheimer's. It was another uh, 30 years before a drug was identified as dissolving the tangles in the brain. And uh, those uh, clinical trials, excitingly, are in phase three. So we're actually working with advocacy groups around the world in over 22 countries to inform patients um, and their caregivers uh, who have early Alzheimer's to moderate Alzheimer's of the clinical research opportunities. And if, in fact, you go to uh, dementiastudies.com, uh, 
uh, it's a website where you can, in fact, learn more about these clinical trials. So that is an incredible breakthrough. And it seems as though you are intent on furthering the communication between patients and doctors so that folks can get access to better options sooner. So what is your plan as you look down the road to grow this company and continue that trend? The revolutionary change in our industry has been actually the internet and social media, Facebook. So in the last three years, our whole business model has changed. We, in fact, have become leaders on Facebook, uh, leading the industry in creating patient communities that, in fact, educate patients about clinical trials. Our team epilepsy page has over 250,000 people. Our page on Alzheimer's is only several months old and it's already got 50,000 followers. Um, and we're in other conditions that are rare, uh, rare forms of skin lupus, liver cancer, uh, all kinds of different medical conditions which bring patients together that usually have a tough time getting information uh, because it's a rare condition. Now we foster these communities where this information exchange is really happening and patients love to learn about things that could help their condition or about med medical advances that could help a family member. So this is allowing engagement, dialogue, and it's demystifying the clinical trial process. That's very important to our work. So without a doubt, we're going more global uh, into communities and countries where, in fact, the hierarchy of the physician has been to control information and social media is allowing that information to, in fact, get into the hands of patients. And empowered patients means they can have meaningful discussions with their doctors. And clinical trials, we hope, is a part of that consideration if there are few medical options available to them. It seems to me that you have an almost unlimited potential to add value to the healthcare process. And I know that you have won many awards for your contributions. Tell me about some of those awards. Well, we've won awards uh, both in the creation of our materials, so we've won numerous awards uh, recognizing the design and the writing of our materials. We've won uh, recognition in the industry uh, in the uh, 100 leaders of the pharmaceutical industry. And so we've actually proudly got about six of our employees who have made that winner circle of the uh, most uh, notable leaders in the industry. And so we're very proud of our uh, heritage and our history and, and the opportunity to really do something that's meaningful, helping millions of people. Sounds to me like you have a lot to be proud of and a very bright future ahead. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.